Hello, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you very much for attending this webinar. The topic today will be uh, smart water best experiences to ensure uh, savings and quality compliance. My name is Ana Sancho, and um, I'm a senior key account manager for water, agriculture, and environment worldwide. Um, also, this webinar is a bit of special. Um, we'll be performing the session with a partner based in Madrid. Um, his name is Asier Gonzalez, and he belongs to the company um, Athing. He'll be speaking during the second part of the webinar. Um, before starting, I just wanted to give you some quick highlights or tips. The session and the presentation will be uploaded within the next couple of days to the website. So in case you need to log out or in the middle of the presentation, it will be available. Also, this presentation is expected to be approximately 30 minutes long. During the session, there'll be a couple of associates and answering quick questions like um, questions or um, comments to links, technical guides, sections from the website, contact information. The remaining questions will be answered by Asier or myself um, after the presentation. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, uh, to Asier, please add at the end hashtag Asier, if it's for him, or add hashtag Ana at the end of your question of comment, if it's, uh, if it's for me or related to my part of the presentation. Also, the session and the answers to the questions will be in English. So I appreciate if all the questions and comments are also in English. Thank you very much, and let's start. So um, what's the current situation of water worldwide? I just want to give you some quick data or facts about um, water on Earth, no? There are more than 326 million trillion gallons of water on Earth. Less than that, or 3% approximately, is fresh water. And two-thirds is located in ice or glaciers related to the impact of climate change or water resources. Well, as you already know, climate change is a phenomenon that we can no longer deny as it, its effect has become increasingly evident. Um, and as the Earth's temperature continues to rise, you no know, glacier ice melts and impacts on the amount of fresh water that we currently have. The fact is that more than 50% of world's water comes from mountain runoff and snow melt. And third fact, the demand of the resources grows as far as the population in urban areas. Um, according to a Technovia report, water demand is likely to grow 35% over the next five years, and the majority um, comes from developing countries. On the other side, according to the UNDP, it is predicted that by 2025, most countries in Africa and West Asia will face severe water scarcity due to the increase of population and the increase of water demand. So what do we see, what do we see as, as the main issues of the water sector? Um, what do we see as happening right now in, when we try to solve an IoT project? Market fragmentation. This is a reality to manage at any point of the whole value chain, not only in geographic areas, but also in business development opportunities. So what municipalities demand and private companies demand is different, no? Some are concerned about um, IT and cybersecurity, some about new smart utilities, the others about their budget, others seem um, to relate smart water to a smart city project. Basically, demands and necessities are not aligned. Low budget to invest in new technologies. Cost and customers' expectations seen as uh, great new fires, no? Um, and then public authorities, well, the cost to renew an old system with new technologies. 
Scalability. Most of the companies we treat, we treat with um, see it as, if we invest in this technology as a POC or a proof of concept, how replicable, repli sorry, replicable will be in a long term. Or the fear of implementing new technologies um, and then trying to know about if it's capable of communicating with the old ones, connecting with the old ones, and so on. And then different technologies for different applications, not a standard one. Um, yes, how many systems we will need to manage at the same time. So there's new technologies with their own cloud, with their own system. And then if we gather that data and we store it, do we, we will need to store it in a separate database, in the same cloud. How efficient is having the data then? And last, a lack of knowledge to implement new technologies. Um, yes, there's a huge hype about technological companies, the new systems coming out, emerging um, on a daily basis. For instance, now everybody's talking about Narrowban, and it seems that Narrowban is the winning technology, no? Um, but at the same time, there's a lack of um, education about smart water technologies. And also, there's a lack of or need for more IND departments within companies. How IoT can help solve problems and save water? Um, a standard platform to capture the data coming from any sensor, any protocol, any device. In the water sector, for water, the intelligence and the power of standardization will be in the IoT cloud platforms, which will be developed or will need to develop to standardize the information coming from any protocol any sensor from the old SCADAs from all devices to receive real-time data from remote areas. Well, some years ago, it was impossible to think about having real-time data from important parameters, from rivers, lakes, environment, but nowadays it's a reality. IoT can make this happen. to prevent versus to fix. And here, I would like to bring an example. Um, water resources and water quality are very related to oil exploration. And in any oil operation, there's a risk for water resources and also for any kind of life living in that kind of habitat. However, Having real-time data continuously allows us to act in a very early stage of a natural disaster. And lastly, to be cost-effective, no? to save money and resources and act consequently, to be able to justify the return of the investment, to be able to, um, allow, or to allow to stop a valve if it leaks, to monitor, to monitor water consumption in real time, or to detect pollution um, in an early stage, to monitor fish farms and to justify traceability and to produce more um, with healthier conditions. And what does Livellium have to offer in the water sector? Well, I'm not going to go into details of what we do as, as a company, as Livellium. Um, there's other webinars that talk about um, what do we do as a company, but just to uh, remind you, or kindly remind you that um, we design and manufacture hardware for IoT solutions to provide wireless sensor networks. And one of our main features um, is the interoperability. Our platform allows or solves the market fragmentation. It's modular, is horizontal, and with an ecosystem of more than 80 partners and distributors, um, helps companies, helps engineering companies and international corporations to solve problems in the water sector. And what do we offer as a solution for the water sector? We basically, um, uh, we basically, um, offer a solution for water monitoring that does not mean and you'll see uh, when asir presents um his part of the 
of their solution problem, well, solutions and projects that we cannot or we are not capable of approaching any other project in the other IoT sector. But right now in our portfolio, we offer mostly water quality, four basic parameters like pH, the solvent oxygen conductivity, but also we have specialized sensors for um, ion uh, concentration in water. Also, we can go from applications to monitoring drinking water, uh, quality fish farms, uh, water treatments, even for precision agriculture. As an example, I just want to introduce um, just a few applications. I'm not going to go into deep on the case studies. Uh, you can always uh, look up that information in um, libelium.com slash case studies. And Asier also will give you more information about, more detailed information about different case studies. But just to give you an idea of what you can do in within IoT, the first one is monitoring fish farms. This particular case study is in Vietnam, but I mean, it could be replicable worldwide. The aim of this project was to monitor um, real-time different parameters, when well, in real time, to control water quality and to prevent diseases that could affect fees or to improve the quality and the quantity. Basically, this is uh, mostly done or do uh, because to meet international regulations. Now, there's a lot of uh, exportation of from um, Vietnam or Asia. Uh, to Europe and quality control regulations and traceability to ensure health within fish farms was required. There's a couple of pictures of the, plum, the, of the deployment, but basically uh, to be aware, to prevent diseases in order to save costs, no? The next one is a project um, developed in Spain, but it's an um, environmental impact de detection system. And the idea was to reduce environmental impact generated by um, building industry or construction activity. By installing different sensors, like uh, water quality monitoring sensors or air quality monitoring sensors, they were able to reduce the measurement time and the impact monitoring also they were able to respond on time in any kind of alarm situation. To minimize the harm also stops just in case something is happening. A last case study, um, we released this around August, I believe. Um, I wanted to present it just because I think it's something very unique and special. It was done by one of my associates or partners in the United States, in West Virginia. We was preserve, preserving endangered fresh water mussels. Um, it's a little bit in between in environmental impact and uh, fish farms. But basically, the Ohio River is the home of population of a lot of different species of mussels, and it's a very it's a high quality indicator um, or a high quality, well, a high indicator for water quality. This system, well, the unique thing of this system is that they integrated our sensors and also third party sensors in a buoy in order to provide real time data transmission that could affect muscles. The main goal of the project has been to monitor and minif minimize the effects of dredging activities on local mussel populations. Um, right now, well, no, at the moment, um, and you'll see that I see I will present other case studies or so different applications uh, with OEM and third party sensors. And now I see it is your turn. Okay, thanks, Anna. Hello, everybody. My name is, uh, is Asier. And uh, thanks to Libelium, and thank you for attending this webinar, too. Okay. Firstly, I'm going to introduce uh, my company, ASIN. 
We are a consultancy and engineering company focused on ICT, water and environmental technologies. With presence in Spain and Mexico, okay? We are part of, um, of the multinational group TPF with more than 4,500 employees in 65 countries and uh, with experience in more than 80 countries, okay? Related to this uh, webinar, we offer uh, broad water services and solutions uh, portfolio about, uh, I don't know, water supply and, and, and wastewater distribution systems, leakage detect detection, water management uh, optimization, and smart water projects in general, okay, for municipalities, industry, large consumers, and smart cities, okay. You can uh, you can get more information about tasting in in our website. Okay, if if I focus in in smart water projects, we work uh, mainly as integrators in every layer of IoT. Okay. In the lower layer, we we select the, the proper sensors and electronic devices in order to meet uh, our customers' requirements. And as probably you, you already know, for many of IoT projects, one of the most important features is the power consumption of electronic devices and sensors. Sometimes uh, I think that uh, it's critical for the viability of the project. Okay? Regarding to the, to the communication layer, the, the communication systems, we have worked with all technologies you can see in the slide. And we are, we are now testing uh, new ones too. We choose always one of them according to the range of the technology, the battery consumption, one more time, and the number of bytes uh, to transmit. Okay, it's, it's the information to transmit for, for not, for not uh, technological people, okay? All of them are very important, and um, besides, and, and, and obviously, we have to take into account the, the country regulations too, okay? Once uh, we have done the measure, we send all collected data, data, sorry, to a platform for being processed and analyzed, okay? As Sana has, to, has uh, told you before, okay, I want to, to stop here to emphasize the value of data, okay? Because it's really, really important for our business and not so much uh, how we get it, but uh, what is the information we get, okay? Especially for final customers who sometimes are more worried about what, what kind of technology they need to use than how to use data for, for improving their business, okay? Sometimes in, in this platform layer, uh, we have developed a customized uh, software, but my experience uh, tell me that in IoT projects, there is no word, okay, in, in, in developing uh, software uh, in-house because platforms are, uh, have, been, have been designed and developed for covering all uh, IoT needs, okay? So don't waste uh, your money, I think, okay? If you want, I can tell you later the features uh, we look for in a platform, but uh, I'm, I, I'm going to, to follow with, with the next slides, okay? Finally, uh, we have the last layer, the visualization layer, which uh, need to be accessible from any place and any device. <coughs> Regarding to Levelium technology, uh, we work with uh, with both lines, okay, the plug and sense, and the OEM lines. But uh, firstly, I want to explain you uh, why Livelium, okay. So well, uh, the main reason we use Livelium technology is because we can reduce very much the time to market. 
and we can modify the products in, in a short period of time. And we consider that uh, in IoT business model, it's very important to uh, reach the market uh, quickly. In my opinion, Wasmode is a good electronic device, and only in those cases we, where we need to integrate new sensors or sometimes uh, sensors, we need sensors with uh, more accuracy. So in those cases, we use the o OEM line, okay? Okay, so I'm going to talk to you uh, a little more about uh, OEM products before explaining some uh, case studies, okay? From, from my point of view, the benefits uh, of, of using this line are that uh, we can uh, integrate our own sensors, okay? Because I, as, as I have told you, sometimes uh, we need uh, more reliable sensors and, and with more accuracy. Although it's true that in that times, uh, uh, sometimes they, they are too expensive, okay? And other times simply it's because uh, the sensors we need uh, they are not in the portfolio, okay? The OEM line uh, allow us to integrate more communication modules, a part of uh, certificated ones, add our powering systems, uh, reduce cost and, and be more competitive, okay? And, and it's, it's the same, and reduce the time, the time to market, okay? But uh, all is not well when, when you decide to use OEM Lime. So you have to take into account uh, some issues, okay? Because uh, you have to assign money, you have to, to spend time and human resources for testing the new configurations for uh, procurement of materials, uh, assembly the, the devices, and uh, obviously the certifications, okay? The C marking and so on. So please, if you are thinking in using uh, OEM line, take, uh, take this into account, okay? Finally, uh, I'm going to explain you some case studies we have uh, selected uh, the more important for us and uh, water related uh, case studies okay the first one uh, is an uh, horizon 2020 project water efficiency and safety in living areas the goal of this project was developing a real-time system to detect water usage patterns uh, anomalies and, and predictive alerts for users and operators we needed to open and close uh, valves in, in 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 some cases okay for it a leveling technology for reading an ultrasonic flow meter the Sofia DOS platform for getting, processing, and analyzing that data, and an own uh, web application for, for the final customer. In this case, so we to have to read and send uh, too much information, we needed to plug the device to the power line and to use uh, 3G communications. The second one is about uh, consumption and efficiency in big water consumers. For instance, in this case, we, uh, we connected some water pulse meters uh, to one wash mode with Sigfox technology in order to control the water consumption in, in a big consumer. I will, show, I will show you later, but uh, only with this, uh, this kind of controls and with uh, leakage detections, for example, 
you can reduce the consumption up to 40%, I think. Okay. Another case study is, uh, is this one where we are monitoring some critical parameters in waste uh, water treatment process. The smart water solution for, for waste of water treatment, this is being, uh, is being tested and validated in four, in four different worldwide locations. In Spain, Denmark, Argentina and Mexico. The main requirements uh, for the project are reading parameters every 15 minutes, sending information to the cloud platform. In this case is IDBox, a Spanish company. Extracting data, patterns, alerts and predictions. And visualize, visualize all collected and predicted data. In this way, we can monitor wetland behavior in real time. It's important uh, that uh, all of these uh, all of these devices are uh, are installed in isolated locations, okay, without power supply. So one more time here, the power supply and the power consumption is very very important in the design, okay. And in this case, as, the, as there are about, uh, I think, the, about 25 sensors, we use a, a mesh network uh, for reading data, okay? And then in, in, in a mesh loom, we send data to ID box uh, with uh, 3G technology, okay? And uh, I'm going to explain the last, uh, the last two case studies. This one is uh, about uh, basins monitoring, the quality, uh, the quality in rivers, where we are monitoring not only water quality parameters, but uh, some PLCs and SCADAs for monitoring water infrastructures in real time. In this case, we use uh, Sigfox technology for wireless devices and again ID box platform for uh, for process and analyze all data okay and the last one uh, is the efficiency in buildings it's it's very similar to the, it's very similar to the, to the case study based in, in, in big consumers. But in this case, we are monitoring not only the water consumption, but uh, gas and electricity, okay? In the last slide, in this case, I, as I has told you, as many people ask us about uh, about the results uh, in the last slide, you can see the, the evolution of water consumption in one of our customers for the last five years. Okay, and you can see how they have reduced the consumption up to fifty percent from from two thousand yes from two thousand twelve to uh, 2016. Okay. Okay. Now uh, it's time to Anna uh, to ask uh, some of your questions. Later, uh, later will be my turn. So please, Anna, uh, go on. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Asier. Let's start with our first question. This comes from uh, Ruti Verma. How many sensors are we talking about in a typical engagement? Basically, for a proof of concept, you can go with one or two devices, uh, but there's depending on the project. No, uh, sometimes for just to monitor, monitor one point, like um, in one of our case studies, there's a need to choose one, maybe two for replacement. Some of them to monitor like uh, continuously in different parts of the river, uh, you might need 10, 20, 
uh, devices. Um, we can go from projects of 80 units or projects of two, five units, depending a little bit on, on the type of project and the needs of the customer. Next question. Um, Lara with what communication protocol do these sensors connect to? Well, we have a wide range of communication protocols. I show that on a slide fifth or sixth. I mean, depending on the type of project, we choose or recommend one type of communication protocol or another. As he had also mentioned, like sometimes, depending on um, the amount of data needed, just for instance, one second. If you need to generate data every second, then you might need uh, 4G, a GPS, cellular connectivity uh, to meet the customer's expectations. If you need to connect data or send data every 50 minutes, 10 minutes, and there's no cellular connectivity and you need like a wide range uh, of radio protocol, then you might go, we might go with row one or 900 HP or 868. But if we have Wi-Fi connectivity and this project is deployed on a city, then we might recommend Wi-Fi. So we try to adapt the protocol depending on the project, depending on the IoT project, depending on the customer's needs, and also depending on uh, the geographical area. Next, next question. Are you pleased with LoRa and Sigfox network? Mm, well, even, I would say yes, but you need to know or you need to consider that there are different types of connectivity options, no? When we talk about Sigfox, Sigfox relies on a network and connectivity. You cannot deploy your own private network. You always need to hire a service. So if you do not have um, Sigfox connectivity or the network is not developed enough, you might not be able to implement Sigfox. Plus, Sigfox has a limitation. It's very reliable, though, but has a limitation of 145, 44 bytes. Sorry, 12 bytes per uh, message, 144 bytes uh, per day. Lura 1, you need to rely on a backend. However, you have less limitations when sending data amount of data and then um, you can either hire the service if your network provider has lower one connectivity or you can either uh, build your own uh, private lower one network however you still need to pay for best station and you still need to pay for that back end where sick folks is much more simple Next question, is it possible to see an online demo? Well, unfortunately not today. We are on streaming and it's kind of complicated. We already, we, we did this presentation within two cities right now and it's been, we've been working on this the whole day. Uh, city is based in Madrid and uh, we are based in Zaragoza. So it was kind of a challenge. I hope you guys liked it. Maybe next time or if, I don't know who asked this question about the demo, but please feel free to contact us directly, either myself here. You can either write to us directly at, uh, well, that's my email address, or you can either write to us here directly if you guys have any additional questions, or if you want a demo, uh, online demo. Next question, um, what are the main advantages or disadvantages between lower one out? Uh, I answered that one correctly already, right? Okay. Um, next question. If you charge the batteries with a PC or renewable resources, sources, what is the credibility of batteries in the long term? Okay. Usually within a week. However, keep in mind on the amount of data you're sending and how often you send in the data. Different protocols have different consumption and also um, every time you send a stream of data, Wasmo falls asleep to uh, save energy. But if you're sending data every two seconds, like in this project for water consumption, then obviously you need to be able to connect to a direct source of energy because Wasmo won't, is constantly awake sending data. So 
sending data every 15 minutes with, uh, uh, let's say, six sensors in a radio protocol or cellular, you should be able to get a lifetime battery of a week. Next question, I think this will be the last one for me, and then we change into our CR. Andre from Portugal, in any of the examples provided, do you integrate with other IoT platforms, both as a, as a source of data or as a client system consuming developing data? Okay, so I'm not sure if I'm understanding this question correctly, so I'm going to answer it uh, the best I can. But Andre from Portugal, if I, did not, I do not answer your question, please feel free to send me an email. I will be very happy to answer your question. Okay, so we, yes, we work with other platforms. Uh, Asir just provided some examples of IoT platforms who you can work with in the water sector, but we have integrated more than 43 different clouds. So any of our customers, can work if they want with any of our uh, cloud partner providers. That doesn't mean that you need to use them. You can either create your own platform, create your own application, or visualize the raw data if you want to vis just visualize the raw data. Um, we do not, client system consuming, we do not work with um, direct customers or end users. It's always, uh, direct system integrators or engineering companies. Our business model is business to business. So once we generate the data and the customer um, gathers that data, um, whatever the customer does with the data, we do not have any control on that anymore and there's no fee involved on, on paying. Um, I don't know if I'm answering this question correctly, um, but I don't know, there's no extra fee involved within um, the data. So the customer can create a module, analyze the data, do a predictive module, or give a service to the end user. And um, we'll, now we're pa passing the microphone to Asier. Well, actually, I'm uh, connecting to Asier in Madrid, and he'll be able to give you answers to the rest of the questions. If there's any additional question for, for myself or Anna, feel free to send me an email or to contact Andrea, who is managing the chat. Asier? Hi, thanks, Anna. So I'm going to, to try to, to, to resolve the, the, the questions, OK? The first one is, uh, does your typical solution include a GAS to locate and visualize sensors along a river or a fish farm? OK. Uh, in, in a river, our clients, our customers, uh, they, they don't usually ask uh, for a GIS uh, system, okay? But uh, it's true that in water management system and in water distribution networks, we uh, use uh, GIS uh, systems to to visualize sensors and different uh, elements in in the network. So, if you need of uh, if one of our uh, customers in, in a river need it, uh, we can we can use it. Okay, with with no problem. Okay, because uh, always the the platforms that uh, we use. Mm, all of them, uh, they they support uh, uh, this kind of, of technologies. The second one is uh, what uh, are the parameters being measured uh, for wastewater? Okay. In in typical projects uh, for wastewater, uh, we usually uh, have to read. Uh, water parameters and environmental uh, parameters okay in water we we usually uh, read the conductivity the dissolved oxygen ph and uh, oxidation reduction potential okay besides uh, the temperature and some uh, specific uh, sensors uh, that uh, some some treatment plants 
they use uh, for read and extra parameters that uh, I, I can't uh, tell you for uh, confidential uh, reasons, okay? Regarding to, to environmental parameters, uh, we usually read to the solar radiation, luminosity, pluviometer, and, and, and all of the, these uh, kind of parameters. Sometimes because uh, these uh, water treatment uh, systems are uh, natural systems, so they need uh, to know uh, how uh, they are going to 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 evolution all over the time. Okay. Another question is: Okay, what's the range of Wi-Fi mesh uh, network? Okay, it uh, it depends. Okay, because. Uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, the regulation in countries is very different, and the the power of the of the of the radio transmitters is not the same. For example, in Europe and in in America, but uh, it's uh, very typical that uh, the max the maximum distance it's about uh, 100 meters or 200. Okay. And uh, besides, in, in radio communications, uh, it it depends uh, on 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 some uh, buildings or rivers or or some details. Okay. When when we are going to to make a project, we usually uh, we usually do a, a coverage stu study in order to, to fit the, the best solution, okay? And the last one is about, okay, it's about the uh, the Sigfox technology. Can you repeat the data throughput on Sigfox again? Did you say 144 bytes per day or per day per day fees? Okay, okay, I, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't, but it's the same. I'm going to 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 solve this question. In CFOX technology, the the the, the most important is that uh, you only can send 14. I think that it's 14 bytes uh, per frame. Okay, and you can send about 140 frames per day. Okay, so. You have to take to take into account uh, how many sensors you have, how many how many times are you going to send data, and and so on. Okay. And uh, okay, that's all. Uh, if you have any question, or uh, because we we don't have much time, please uh, feel free for for sending me an email or or contact me through social networks. And one more time, thank you so much uh, for uh, for attending uh, for attending webinar. Okay.